Good morning, everybody. Big break with no friends. He's in trouble here now. Doesn't really have an open shot. 13 does not pass down to the top left. We're about to get away on the other table. How's, ev how's everybody doing this morning? Excuse me. Throat is so sore. I can't talk very loud in here with the, how quiet it is and how close we are to the table. So makes it even rougher on the voice trying to speak quiet. You can hardly, hardly speak. No problem, Colin. Thanks for tuning in this early in the morning. We're just after 8 Eastern Time. Good morning, Sharon. I'm back home in Calgary at 6 a.m. So don't know how many people be watching from back home, but see who's up on the East Coast right now. scratch on the right hand side there. Which is your team, Colin? just pull up and see where these guys are from on Compu Sport. Let's 
they didn't bring us a score sheet this morning, so it's hard for us to tell. We're down to the top 16 left. Potluck is from Ontario here. And pineapples are from Connecticut. Loser this is out with in fifth through eighth with a thousand dollars. Winners guaranteed two thousand. Drapes have a pocket here, it's just whether she's got what she has for an easy opener, which I don't think she's got much. I think she can only see an edge of that nine ball. This might bank into the side, but I think that three ball's in the way. The only ball she's left him is this one ball to the bottom left corner. Morning, Joe. How you doing? Shoot the nine first. Shape on the thirteen. You shoot this, you gotta draw it back and you're flirting with the right hand side pocket. Play the nine first, thirteen next, you're coming out off this left hand side rail for your last shot where she's pointing to the bottom right. YouTube, we got Daniel tuning in from the Philippines. And Rick's asking, where are we? We're in Niagara Falls, Canada. The Americana Resort. For the APA-CPA border battle. Pineapples is from Connecticut. Potluck is an Ontario team. Shot. This one will be a little bit of a stretch for her, though. I think. Yeah, maybe not. Oh, 
She just poked out behind that 8 where she's got a shot at the 10. So that 8 ball's tough. It doesn't have a open pocket. <coughs> that nice yeah, top right she's asked for her time out to get some help Nice try. Fairly good leaf. It's got the two in the side or the seven in the top left corner. But it looks like he's going to play safe. She can see the edge of that. And from here, if I were her, I'd just roll down and tap that eight off that end rail, leave it sitting over that corner pocket. Goal would be to just roll off it and try to freeze up the cue ball to the five ball. If even that hard. You just want to tap this out over top of that corner. She hit it too hard. Now it's tough with him having that many balls and at the level he is, you just want to tap that eight ball over top of the corner. You can uh, sort of play to the skill level of your opponent. So chances are I didn't think he would be running this out of here just to tap that eight over top of that corner pocket, but now she's froze that up. It's going to have easier safe for him to make. because there's no easy pocket for her to sink that eight ball in so he can shoot a little more confidently here. If, if he misses, chances are he's not going to leave her a shot. Although he doesn't want to sink too many balls here because <coughs> he wants to be able to break that out if he's going to go for the run out. You don't want to leave that as your last ball. So I'd call safe off this four. And sort of bank that four back over to that top left corner. Again, I think he's left her a window to, she can see the edge of it. <clears throat> Here's another shot where I'd play this very softly. Just tap it over off the <coughs> right side rail. Just give it a teeny bit of distance between that and the six. 
You still want to be blocking that pocket, but you want to have the opportunity to where you can sink it. Too hard. But she's left it a little tougher. She's got the three ball to this bottom right corner. Hey, no problem, Kevin. Yeah, 6 a.m. back home or 20 after 8 here in Niagara Falls. And we fly home tomorrow and then I fly out to Tuesday to Nanaimo, so it'll be a three hour time change from what I'm just getting used to now. Here's another shot where I just tap this off that top rail. Back out a couple inches, just putting it a little closer to that corner. Just really soft and leave that cue ball down on that top rail. Sort of in behind the two ball. So if she goes back and watches this, just really soft tap that off that edge. Sort of at the angle you're looking at there. But very soft. Well, she's put it back over against the rail there, but she can see it into the corner now, so not too bad. But that six does pass. So wide open table. I think I take the three in the side right now. Six next, then the two. He's got, thanks. He's got a long shot. I'd be taking the four here because if he does miss, it put those three in between the eight ball. And come up tough now. Didn't come quite far enough for the four ball, and real steep angle on that six. Getting some advice from his coach now. You are allowed that one timeout per rack. skew and scratch on the left. He's blocked the pocket here, so here's your choice. Either try the bank, or you can try to put the eight in there. Just want to make sure you leave that cue ball on the rail or a tough shot for your opponent if you're not going to make that eight ball. I think I'd try to put it through that corner where the six is. Now she's used her timeout already, I believe, this rack, so. So it is still <coughs> his break. On the left, he has to make contact with the rack, so he is still breaking. They're just asking the ref. Yeah, Dominic, we're going to be doing a Nimo. We're, uh, that's the nice bank. Um, it's 
the CCF Vancouver Island Championships starting Wednesday with Scotch Doubles. 64 teams here, Joe, in the 8-ball. 32 in the 9-ball they had. <clears throat> all these teams have won to get here. They've all got, they've won three rooms covered, their entries covered, so their only expense is their travel here. They have rooms covered, entries covered. And they're playing for some big money. This is a thousand dollar match right now. Thousand dollars difference between winning and losing this one. Thousand to the loser. Winner goes on playing for two th guaranteed two thousand. Yeah, it's all one division, Kevin, and we're down to the final twelve, I believe. No, we're down to the final eight. Loser is out in fifth through eighth. See if the viewers get involved around the room here. It's pretty quiet. We're only got four tables in this room. We're in the finals room. Last year we were in the main room to start off and then moved overnight into this room. So it's a lot better with us starting off in this room than moving. Because last year Grant and I moved it. I think it was three in the morning. We had to move our setup last year. Winner of this will be playing the winner of Mark Sharks versus Mixed Nuts. Mixed Nuts you guys seen on the stream already. And on the top half of the bracket we got Bride Regulators versus Twisted Souls. Winner of that plays Magic Cues or the Hundreds. That brings us down to the final four.
So Colin, you're cheering on Alex. Which table is Alex shooting on? Who's Alex? Is he on the right hand side shooting right now? We have 40 tables at this event. This is table 39 and 40 that we're streaming. Our event next week's got 36 tables. But we run, we're running over five days instead of just two and a half days here. Next week we'll have scotch doubles, and eight and nine ball singles, men's and ladies. Team nine ball and team eight ball, men's and ladies, next week. Oh, he's getting uh, his mount lined up, kicking at that five ball. Just nick the eight ball. It's tough there because a little bit of spin can change where that coach is showing him to aim, aim on that rail. Just a hair of right or left changes that angle coming off. That's I tend to every time I'm kicking like that, I'm playing with a little help in English, so that would have been inside left. Which allows you to aim a little higher up the rail and take that eight ball out of the out of the equation. <clears throat> now he's used up his one time out for the rack, so he's looking, wondering what to do with that eight ball. I think I cut it over to that top left. If or is he? I think the only reason I cut it over that way is it will block that pocket for that 9, that 13. He's taking his time out here now. <clears throat> He's telling he was looking at cutting it to back to the right here, which sends that cue ball flying around. <clears throat> and his coach is telling him you don't want to make that cue ball travel that much, chance to scratch.
So I think he's calling. Tell him to call that 15 in the right hand side. Uh, the scores, we only were keeping track of the overall score. So after each one of these matches is done, I'll update the overall score. What I might do for the <coughs> next uh, match coming up the next game between the two opponents I'll uh, see if I can grab their names and we'll just concentrate on one match to where I can keep track of the score and we'll know what they race to. I know um, <coughs> Colin's cheering on Alex who's with Potluck. Alex is a four. playing either a three or a two. He's playing Elizabeth, which, who is a three on the right hand table. So with that race, four to three, Alex got to win three games, she has to win two. And she's up one. So if she wins this, It's over. She's looking pretty good with where that eight ball is and the shot. If he's got ball in hand, it's an easy bank on the eight. Tough for the stripe to get out of there. That's where I might sit right in behind and just push that eight ball just past the side pocket. Leave the cue ball in behind the eight ball, or the ten ball. And this is tough. You want to give this the angle to where you're going to push that eight ball down table. Okay, play it safe. Guarantee yourself one more shot. And just push that eight past the side, leaving the cue ball in behind the ten ball on the rail. Good chance for Elizabeth on the right hand table here with the eight ball. And this should win it two nothing for her. Which will be three points for her team. That's the only thing, making that shot now he's in trouble on the eight. He's got to bank it.
and avoid scratching. Oh, she's sorry. I thought she was on the eight ball. She is not. Again, you've got to be very careful. You can put this four ball in front of the eight with a thin cut, but you want to try to leave it hiding behind the seven as well. Left her a cut or left him a cut on that eight ball. That's why you don't over hit that. Hit a little softer, it sits in front. Yeah, Chris, Chris is a two on that left hand table. Or sorry, three. That just missed that eight ball shot. So we're 1-1 one, one on the right. That one's over on the left, so what we'll do is... So we'll keep track of this. <coughs> Again, Elizabeth needs two games. Alex needs three. She was on the right of the scoreboard there, 2-3. They're sitting at 1-1. One, one. Chris versus Elizabeth. <clears throat> Race is still the same. If that's Chris on this table, <coughs> I'm sorry, got your name wrong, but his Chris is a three as well, so the races don't change. <laughs> might have that. Might have the land ball on the side.
Yeah, we have Ray on YouTube saying he loves these amateur battles. I love seeing them too. I love the tight games. I mean, it's nice to see the odd run out, but if you got a couple pros playing run out after run out after run out after run out, it just it it gets boring. I find that I love the tactical battles. I can say I watch I watch more snooker than than anything if I'm watching pool other than what I'm broadcasting. He chooses to play safe. <coughs> he <coughs> has left Elizabeth this seven in this bottom right corner. She's got a straight shot at that. She's just got to watch if that's the one she decides to play that she does not follow it in. She doesn't have much of an angle on it. But she can play the combo. I might do that. She's not really leaving anything if she's uh, plays the combo either. Wow, nice shot. Daniel, there is no CPA or AP in Calgary. The franchise is open if somebody wants to start it up. Again, the five players you put up, their skill levels can only rank to 23 or under. So that's where some strategy comes in. And you change your, your handicap can, or your ranking can change throughout the year. So There's nobody talking in this room at all. So quiet. The blue team is the pineapples. for the most part turning easy. Fire him, I think I cut that 11 down in front. Leave it sitting over top where the five ball is. Or, he, or the nine ball down this end. Cut it in, leave it over top of the corner where the seven is. Either one you got to take over a pocket. I don't like moving this ball because that one will sink to the top right. I think I cut this 11 down and take over that pocket.
or sorry, the 15 on the rail. It's the 11 should have left where it was. The one in the side, try to play shape for the seven. Which she does have shape for the seven. Play the seven and come back up table past where you're at right now. <coughs> she is a two. He, um, Chris is a three, Elizabeth's a two. <coughs> okay. She does have the ankle if she can play it. And at a two, I'm not sure if you, she can. You can sink that two ball bottom left and come back and spin up and just clip the nine open, but or the six open that's, that's sitting there. If that does go by, it's hard to tell from this angle. I don't think it does. She's good. But I think you want to touch it. Touch it op over top of that pocket now if you can from where you're at. Because all this is going to do is leave you a longer shot on the six. Unless you can come way back down table. She just doesn't have the angle. She's so straight. This is actually going to work out in her favor, I think, giving them ball in hand. Rather than sinking that. tables. Even with ball in hand here, there's no real easy way to run these out. With where the nine ball is placed. I think either <coughs> sink the seven ball, leave the nine over the pocket, and cue ball right up tight on the left hand rail here. Or you take the ball in hand and you go in behind and just tap your 11 out, leaving the cue ball right in behind the 6 ball, or frozen to the 6. But I like sinking the 7, leaving her a shot because that 6 isn't really sinkable from where it is. really want to make sure this doesn't follow the seven in because then you're still having to shoot. There is no call shots other than the eight ball. And that's where you have to patch the corner 
or side where you're shooting the eight. Coaching is loud. Derek, you're allowed one timeout per rack. Um, the coach can come up and stop it yourself. And Toledo, they're talking about that's gone, uh, started off with double elimination, but we've reached the money, so it is no longer double elimination on the A side. Excuse me, tap that six to where that will go by that eight ball into the top corner now. It's unfortunate with that angle now. He's tracking that cue ball over to the eight as he sinks this. Unless he can play with some bottom and draw, pull it so he draws into the side rail. But going to take a good stroke to do that and not touch these balls. It's turned out okay. I think it's still cuttable. shot you want to try to overcut it as much as you can because I don't think you can overcut it a whole lot it'll go in so just don't want to hit this thick because that's what happens you open up that pocket although this is tough to get shape on that eight ball it's fairly straight Although that six will play off the rail, off the eight. will make it hill hill
Yeah, he put um, joint protectors down on the corner before he shot that. It was marked. After this game on the left, I'll double check the overall score. I'll mark that in. Another dry break. Where are the teams from, Paul is asking. <clears throat> Pineapples is from Connecticut and Potluck is from Ontario. Doesn't list the city for... There we go, Whitby, Ontario. So, like I was saying earlier, this is a thousand dollar match. Loser is out with a thousand, winner goes on, guaranteed two thousand. Both tables are fairly tied up, so just tapping balls around. <coughs> we'll have 
table does have a cut on the 15 <coughs> to the top right. can see the nine ball. He's got just enough of the nine to come into this bottom right corner. But it's very tight. That'll work out perfect. And froze to the ball there. That's the only thing, Dan, with uh, the levels. This would get be great for brand new teams and stuff coming into the league that's fell on the left hand table there. Um, It'd be great, I'd say, like if you take our, our SML back at home from, I'd say from A3 and under would do good for this league. Anything above that A3, A2 level, those are going to be your sevens here. So what I mean with Calgary, we got above A2, we got A1, then Open, then Masters, and then the Elite, so above that. And I think those A3 players would be the, the sevens here. It could be done. There'd be an appetite for it. You just need to find the those lower level players to go with the sixes and sevens. And there's that timeout being taken on the right-hand table. <coughs> yeah. I think this in Calgary would do okay. It's just everybody's going <coughs> to, especially for the money you play for, how it does anything else. Nice shot on the left-hand table there. They 
think he's got to take this 13 while he can. <coughs> so. He put the truck actually where he wants to leave the cue ball if he can. Draw it off and run into that 7 ball. Yeah, I don't, Dan, I, li I like that option. And I mean, it's great for show, showing the lower level players what to do in the game situation. I think they retain that better than if you're just trying to tell them in a practice. starting with the 15 into the side, right-hand side pocket. Yeah, Dan, I'd like the option. That'd be a good option for that coaching in the intermix for the CCS in Calgary. Where you got the mix of all the players playing together. That was a nice try, but that'll leave him the kick off this right-hand rail. But he will have to play that with some inside spin to kill it and drag it straight out. If I'm him, I bank it to that top right pocket. There's a little bigger pocket with the 11 ball over there. It's a good hit, unfortunate scratch though. The cue ball on the left. Seven, two, one, three, eight on the left hand table. He's going to go three. I like 
using that three ball to get onto the eight ball. And he's left him open and almost straight on that 13. So you do have to draw this back. He does have the angle he can play through with top, top right and come around a couple rails out for the eight, but. I really drew that all the way back. It's gonna be Long and just off straight. Yeah, I don't know if you'd want to talk to them or coach them every single shot. They got to learn on their own. <coughs> Shot that way too hard and it's going to scratch. <clears throat> he just needed a slow roll that up there at that angle. You can try to take over that pocket where the eight ball is. <clears throat> I don't mind that. Leave the cue ball on this bottom rail. Long shot on the six off the rail. Try to get that 13 in behind the eight. She's got the angle. She can play it off that bottom rail and just tap the eight out and sit. Take over that pocket. I think it's probably her best option right now than trying to make this somewhere. <laughs> or bank the 13 down, try to cover the six, one of the two. But I like trying to put it in, in where the eight is. And, it's, I mean, it's not bad where it is, it's sinkable now, but she needed to get that cue ball farther over to this bottom left corner on this bottom rail, leave it a little tougher than what it is. Oops. So she wins two to three, or sorry, two, two.
So that actually gets uh, two one in that overall score, but I'll double check the scores. Okay, got the overall team scores updated there. It's 3-3 after the first two two matches. He's just stuck with that three ball and what's going to happen with it. Sink the two, draw it back a little bit and then try to kick the three ball over. Or if your angle's good right now, maybe you try and go for the kick on the three ball and shape the two next. But I think they're... I don't know if you told him to play safe and just tap it over the pocket. I think that's what he did. So you are blocking that eight ball. Does have this 11 to this bottom right. It's just off straight. But I like taking maybe the 13 now. With the top right, try to break out that three ball. Although you are in a perfect spot. Do sink the 11, so draw back just a hair. <coughs> Off the 11 into the 8. You can actually draw into the 8. Give yourself a little better angle to break out that 3 ball.
Okay, he's got, should have the angle now if he can play the 13 off that top rail off. I believe that's the two ball on the top left, depending on how it's sitting. You can clear the eight, clear the eight for that top pocket. Optimal player. <clears throat> um, like I'll list the, they got eight players listed on each team here. <clears throat> on the pineapples, they got a six, five, seven, three, five, two, three, three. On potluck, they got a four, five, three, six, four, three, seven, four. Those are their player rankings. Your uh, threes and fours are going to be your the majority of your players. You can have two or three of them. If you can get away with a couple good fives and a good six, and maybe not even a seven, gives you some room down below to maybe have an extra couple fours or a five over having a four. It's all got to add up. The five got to add up to 23 or less. Yeah, you can play four fives and a three. 23. going off of somebody like your level, my level, we're going to be the sixes and sevens. So any about any, how many players in Calgary we have play above me. So I mean on a league night I'm averaging one or two runouts out of the five games that I play so I think my runout rate's at about 20 or 25 percent which I think in this would put me as that six or seven for sure. You get up to somebody like Ben that's got like, you know, those guys that Russ Whittle, Ben, Eric, Stephen, Joe, all those guys that play, and they, they're, they're sitting at an 80% run-out rate on a bar box table. They come in here and because winter breaks, even if they got a race to six or seven, you might not shoot with a lot of the guys in Calgary, top players. Yeah, they just started that second match, so I'll flip back to the split screen. That was the dry break. I think in Calgary, though, you could this would draw in a whole new group of players where you can get the husband and wife coming out and playing. That's this works a lot better for the <coughs> for the lower lower ranked players. I'd like to see this in Calgary. Yeah, I want to see pool grow all over the place. Calgary between all the different leagues, the in-house stuff and everything like that. We probably got 500 pool teams in Calgary or more.
Matt, these teams are from uh, Potluck is from here in Ontario and Pineapples is from Connecticut. Wallingford, Connecticut, pineapples, and they'd said the time the city or town from Ontario here too, and I forget what it was, Williamsburg or something like that. Yeah, Ted's kind of covered by me, so. But I will chat with you, Dan, because I do think there's there is room for it in the city. So yeah, let's uh, after I'm back from Nanaimo, let's sit down. We can chat for sure. Kevin, he did uh, he slid off the side of his ball off the rail back into that pack. I watched the replay to make sure because I didn't see it off the start, but it was a good hit. But you do need to make contact with the rail or sinking a ball. There you go, yeah. I'll have some time out there. Stop by and we'll chat about it. Unfortunate. Didn't have <clears throat> didn't have enough right spin on that right hand table to come around that seven. to make that but doesn't really have an angle here for really running into these balls here play a little top right and hopefully you can go into them Nice leave.
find him here on the left table, I play some bottom off that and sink that seven ball. I might even do it so I'm not going to play that combo. I'm just going to shoot away. Concentrate on making that, but that's the only problem now. He's got to shoot again, but he does have this ball. I think it's a 13 on the bottom rail here. Just make sure you leave that cue ball over on the left-hand side rail. And you'll have him hooked. Just thins off the edge of this three. He's good. Too thick. You wanted to put that cue ball on that top left end rail. Hit a lot thinner than that. be drawn off of this and trying to freeze to the eight ball. There's no, now that you're sinking balls, there's no point until you can break that out. You want all your balls on the table. I would have played safe. I think he's left him a thin cut with the angle to come back in and break that eight ball out. <clears throat> Need a touch inside to hold that, to hit that eight ball. Morning, Lonnie. He's in tough here now because you're breaking that out. Again, I think I hit the extreme left edge of this as thin as I can with some inside spin and bring that cue ball up to that top rail. Kind of like that. That nine ball will pass straight down into this bottom right corner though. Yeah, it does. <coughs> Standard foul rules. Ball has to hit a rail, make a ball or hit a rail after contact. just off to where they're going to call sudden death. See the referee checking his watch. There are time limits.
pretty much a stop shot there to play the eight in the side pocket. So you see the ref in the yellow shirt walking back and forth there. He's, he's just talking to the teams about maybe having to call the sudden death. Which makes, I believe it makes every ball worth two points or doubles everything. Morning, Eddie. How you doing? be the time for a break and run. Got the first part, he's got a ball down. It's a high ball, so I think you have to take what you make. I'd be taking high ball here anyway, I think. His only tough ball now. He's got the 14 here. Shape the 10. I think the 10 goes to this bottom right. combo right now. It is lined up. Or you play the 9 to this bottom left corner and shape that 14 ball next. If you can. Yeah, that's the 3 0 for sh shutout. Yeah, 2 0. Pona gets a game. 2 1 on the hill. So but I think those points double in the in the the game points or match team points double in the in the shoot or the tie or the final sudden death. Sorry, that's what I'm trying to get out. We've had 9 ball and 8 ball going back and forth. I know 9 ball, the points doubled for each ball. But I think the Team points double here. You can win. Yeah, it's on Compu Sport, John. I 
He's going to have to off the rail, off the three ball for the eight ball in the corner, the right hand table. Very nice shot. He's got that on the side. You just got to watch the cue ball. Doesn't run into that three. Stick behind the two. Deal you hear your Maybe aiming to have the cue ball run into that two ball. Leave yourself for the eight for the top left. Big break, but an easy opener. One ball goes to the top right. Seven you can cut to the top left. If you want a straight. Well, there is the one right behind the one there that will cut to the top right, but then cut. Overcut. He was good on the eight ball. Take the one drawback, play the three in the right hand side. Morning, Chris. Sort of in the middle of nowhere there, unless the two does have the window between the six eight. the whole pocket. Nice weight. It went in. <coughs> hey Terry, how you doing? That is Jeff that just I'm not sure which which table Jeff's shooting on. Jeff is a six for potluck. <laughs> so
Stephen, which table is Jeff playing on and which one's Jeff? Fortunately, I don't know. Okay, he's playing on the left table here. And then you said Ryan Ireland, he's their seven. He's playing on the right hand table. I'm assuming this is him at the table then. I've had played played a few players in here over the last couple of days in between games and the played a couple couple sevens from a couple different teams. Just I'm trying to figure out how how I would rank or how we would rank players back in Calgary based on. How they play, so I've played a couple sevens and a couple sixes. <laughs> and based on the few games each, we'd have a lot of. Nice bank, really nice. We'd have a lot of sevens in Calgary. And a nice shot on the left hand table too, nice cut all the way down and leave. Draw it back to about right where he is now for the eight ball on the top left. Perfect. Saying it's Mika, Netherland, or Micah. I've got uh, it's listing a James Netherland. Maybe that's James. There's James and Nicole. Netherland on the pineapples. So I'm assuming this is James. It shows him as a skill level six. Nice break. Ball down. Couple balls down. <laughs> it's hard to tell. If that five goes by that 13 in the top left, I take low ball. If not, I gotta take high ball. 
So 13 you can sink. We got an easy starter <coughs> with the one ball on the side. If you want to go low ball, you can always use the two to break out that five. That's as long as this six ball passes, just by the 11 to the bottom left. If not, I'm going high ball right now. Take this 11, aim the cue ball to run into the nine if you can. That'll work to get on the 11 or the 13, I guess. overran everything here. You have to play this combo to hold. Oh, it went by. Even better. All those got unlucky again. Nice tight match. I like this going down to the end. Woods are all here for him. Play the six, leave yourself for the two or the five next. Uh, it's gonna make it a little tougher right on the rail. But five ball. Overran that to here, here too. So I think you gotta take the four ball to this bottom left corner. sure you leave enough angle on this three to leave yourself to get up for the eight for the top left corner because it does not pass down to the bottom right. It's tight shot into the right side. <clears throat> so you're playing this looking at where you're going to leave yourself for that eight ball. You want to play exactly where you want the three. You want to look to see where you play the three to the eight and work backwards. So this makes it tough right on the rail. Does not help. And he's fairly straight. So you're having to play this with top right to get the spin out and around. He's looking to see if it po <coughs> passes to the bottom left as he's looking at it. I don't know. It's going to be very, very tight. Mm. 
My school, that's where he's leaving himself. <clears throat> Shot. Cutting a four on the side. That's <coughs> really tight on the right hand table here. I'm looking exactly down the angle from the four to the side. I'm trying to play it as a two way, maybe playing safe, but with a stripe right over the side. Should be no problem for him to run stripes out here now. Big break. <clears throat> with that six to the top corner. You're going to shape the two off your one ball to that left side. Unless you want to do that right now. But I think with the overlap here you take the six while you can. Six, three, four will come to this bottom right corner through the window. Line yourself back up for the seven, one, two. See, so you've got to take the six right now. He's got the seven on the side, go that way, but you're should having to shoot the one next. Unless you play it hard enough to try to break that two out right now. But you don't need to do that. Two will pass to that left side. He's got a nice angle on the one to play the two. Take the one now. I guess the eight ball on the break does count as win, doesn't it? Now, he's got a thin cut on the two. <coughs> don't want to be trying to shape that two to the eight ball. He'd drawn that back, he needed to play that little bit of top spin. That last shot. I guess as <coughs> long as you can see the two right now, you got to take it now. Otherwise you're having to get perfect shape on that 
four ball to bring to break the two out or play shape on it. But then it's tough playing two into that side and getting shape on the eight ball. Taking this first doesn't do any any good, I don't think. Again, I think if you can see it, but I don't think you can here. Take that too. Now he's got to try to come back into it and break it out. Big pocket with that 11 ball up there. That'll work, you can play it off. I think it's a 15 ball there into the side. You don't have the angle to cut it. It's got to go off. Again, big pocket into that top corner. I think I play off this bottom rail. Try to kick it and cut it all the way up to the top right. I think if you can see the 11, I take, <coughs> take the 11 first, but that way it leaves the 15, the full pocket. Nice shot. Nice angle just to drift up. 
to just below the side pocket for the 8 in the bottom right. So this will be Hill Hill, I believe. Well, it's kind of a messy table, that break didn't hit it quite full on. Only opening shot is that nine ball. I think you'll take this and come slamming back into the back. Nice shot. If you can see that 11, or sorry, the 15 beside the 8, you take that right now to this bottom left corner. If it goes. And your only other real trouble ball is 13. We have the, I think it's 10 there to, or 12 to break it out. He does have a full, the full two ball to shoot out. I think I thin the edge of the two and bring the cue ball right back down to where it is on that top rail. Hit the left side of the two ball with some left spin. Bring that cue ball back up against the top, top rail, middle of the table there, against the rail. to use jump cues or you could be firing at the six into the side do you have that window between the <coughs> couple stripes there but you're allowed only to use full cue jumps so I thin the edge of the two ball leave the cue ball back against the top rail Turned out okay, other than <coughs> he tied up those two stripes a little more, got rid of the breakout ball, but he has left a shot on.
battle going on on the right hand table there. So it's 3-2 <clears throat> for Dave on the right-hand table. They're both racing to five. They're both sevens. So 3-2 for Dave with Dave breaking on the right-hand table. He is so straight on this five ball, I don't think you can get over to break the seven. You can cut the three in right now. He's left this street in the top right corner. With that being fairly straight, I think you got to try to shape the six next to break out the eight ball. Because the seven you can sink from almost anywhere. This is on the left hand table. <coughs> You're going to want to play this so you bring that cue ball right up. You want to take a look, leave it right near the side pocket. Give yourself an angle to play that six and run into the eight ball. So you don't want to over hit this. Don't travel too far. That looks pretty good. Even if you can just clip the 13. You just want to open that eight ball up. If you can clip the 13, that's even better. Leave the 8-ball right there. If you're hitting the 8-ball first, you're putting it towards that top rail. But either or. Main thing is get that 8, eight into the open so you can sink it. <coughs> and he didn't have the angle, I guess, so... I don't think that passes to the top right. Oops, sorry guys. Go 
Hopefully the cameras will pop back up here. There we go.
Hey, sorry guys, I'm back. Yeah, that's a take a phone call I needed to take there, so it's unfortunate where I'm the tournament director for the Vancouver Island Championships for the CCS next week, so trying to stream here and set up and organize that tournament out there, so I had to take a phone call. So apologize for that. Yeah, as soon as I walk away, I try to kill the sound. You don't need th these mics pick up so much that do any private conversations being broadcast. Uh, after that last one, it'll be five four, I believe. for the overall team, but it was 3-2 <coughs> before I had to run away for Dave on Pineapples. Double check with her team score. Oh, thank you, Chad. Thanks for tuning in. No, I love doing it. I mean, I love running the tournaments. I love playing in them, streaming. So Ben and I will have a busy week this next week. We pack up here, drive to Toronto, got a hotel right near the airport overnight, take a flight tomorrow morning back home, repack, do some laundry, and then Ben and I head out Tuesday morning to Nanaimo, BC, where we'll set up to stream and run and play in the CCS Vancouver Island Championships starting next Wednesday, where I'm playing in scotch doubles, nine ball singles, eight ball singles, and te eight ball teams, and nine ball teams, playing in every event. It's going to be a crazy week. So I think we're going to check. I don't know if it's when, if that's, it's over. Yep. It's over. Pineapples wins. Nice close match down to the sudden death. So guys, we're going to reset. We'll be back. In a half hour, I think our next match is scheduled for 11. Morning, Brian. How you doing? I'm feeling good. So, I got some other stuff to set up with that tournament starting next week. We'll be back in about a half hour, guys. We'll reset. If you are brand new to Q Sports Live, make sure you've gone and liked our Facebook page, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you click the little bell on the YouTube channel. That'll notify you when we go live. Again, you'll get a notification on Facebook and YouTube. And we'll be back in about a half hour. Continuing on. Thanks for tuning in this morning, everybody. See you back shortly. <laughs>